Hi, this is Integza. Hummingbirds don't hum. That's a misnomer, and they are scum. Now really, if you think hummingbirds are nature little angels, you're wrong. They're fucking savage. Nectar greed makes hummingbirds kill each other constantly. And do you know why? Competition. They have a metabolism 100 times faster than an elephant. So these little birds need to ingest a lot of calories, very frequently, or they die. They normally eat their own weight in sugar every single day. Which is about 3 grams of it. I know it doesn't seem too much, but imagine eating your own weight in sugar every single day. Well, if you're American, you probably do. Hummingbirds are imprisoned in a vortex of dependency. They spend most of their time eating, because they need absurd amounts of energy so they can fly. And why do they fly so much? Well, to get to the top of plants and eat. It's a vicious cycle, and in the end, it's all for energy. Oh energy, you are the ultimate currency of the universe, and we need you, in all shapes and forms. Through many years of evolution, human beings found different ways of getting energy out of stuff. If it's edible, you can eat it. But you can also burn it. You can use chemically stored energy, which in most cases means you can burn it. I'm not gonna eat this. You can take in the sun's light and do the photosynthesis. Photo photosynthesis. Fuck yeah. You can get your electric guitar flowing with electricity, but never with a battery. Fuck yeah! Or you can smash atoms together and get that nuclear juice. Fuck yeah! Energy is actually just like money. And in this universe, everything has a price. Everything we eat has a certain amount of calories, and everything we do costs energy. Want to go swimming for half an hour? That will be four apples, my good friend. My logo. Maybe a short practice of karate. You may ingest 30 pickles. Yep. Ooh, a very nice pickle. Pickle ASMR. Oh, you're more of a marathon person. For that, you will need 7 cheeseburgers of energy. What does 400 grams of Nutella get you? Diabetes. It gets you diabetes. But yeah, we do consume a lot of energy on a daily basis. Just sitting down, we are burning calories, because we need to use several muscles to keep our backs straight and support our own weight. And believe me, some people have a lot of weight to support. Obesity is a serious problem in this generation. And in my opinion, there's only one prime culprit. Gravity. 9.8 meters per second square of pure oppression, chaining us to the floor and putting a number on the level of attraction the planet has for us. Disgusting! I say no more! No mas! C'est fini! I'm done with gravity, so I have devised a plan to cancel it. As you may know, the Earth spins. And just like in a washing machine, this spin generates a centrifugal force that pushes all things out. Currently, the Earth takes about 24 hours to make a full rotation. And that is just not fast enough. To cancel gravity, the Earth would have to spin 20 times faster. This would shorten the days to only one hour and a half. I know the days would be really short, but you gotta see the advantages here. You would live to be hundreds of thousands of years old, and every board would be an overboard. Except for you. You will never be an overboard, you piece of shit. So, all I have to do now is contact Elon Musk and see if he can lend me some rockets to stick in the equator. I know some of you might be scratching your heads, thinking my plan is ridiculous because I don't even know if the planet spins. If you had that thought, you are what they call nowadays Flat Earther. And that's fine. No problemo. This is a channel of science. I like a good debate. And I can come up with good arguments to prove that Earthicha is not like Kira Knightley's chest. My favorite proof of the planet's rotation comes from a very interesting contraption. The Foucault Pendulum, invented by the French physicist Léon Foucault in 1851. 
It's a kind of pendulum that is not constricted to just one plane of rotation, like a pendulum in an old clock. Instead, is able to rotate freely in all planes. If you are wondering if it's this freedom of movement that makes it able to prove the planet's rotation, well, not exactly. What actually does the trick is the universe's overall laziness. According to the supreme rule of inertia, if anything is moving in a certain direction, anything, it tends to keep itself going in that direction unless it's disturbed. So what Master Foucault concluded, and this is why it's such a brilliant idea, was that if he constructed a really big pendulum and made it swing for a long time, it would be looking at two possible and distinct outcomes. Either the Earth was not rotating and the pendulum would keep on swinging in the same way until stopped by friction, or the Earth was actually rotating and because the pendulum movement is lazy and tries to keep its absolute direction, it would appear from his point of view that the pendulum was rotating. Spoiler alert, that's exactly what happens. The pendulum will rotate 360 degrees in roughly 24 hours. If placed in one of the poles, as the position of the pendulum approaches the equator, this period stretches out to infinity. Because of the angular disparity between the axis of rotation of the Earth and the plane of oscillation of the pendulum. In some museums, to give some visual feedback, they normally put pins in the ground that are slowly, one by one, knocked down by the pendulum. This happens in a very consistent and predictable way. In most days. There's one exception. During the solar eclipse of June 30, 1954, the French polymath Maurice Allais went on to win the Nobel Prize in Economics, noticed an anomalous precession on the plane of oscillation in a Foucault pendulum. Not satisfied with the results, he detected yet again, during the solar eclipse of 1959, a slightly increase on the planet's gravity, this time using a periconical pendulum he invented. This anomaly was named after the man itself, as Ali effect, and in truth has not been explained to this day. During many years some scientists tried to replicate Ali's results. In some experiments the anomaly was detected. In others, the results were inconclusive, and in some cases, no increase in gravity was detected. Because general relativity fails to explain this distortion in gravity, some people think that Einstein's theory should be revised. What do you think? This is everything for today. If you liked the video, please subscribe. Bye bye. They normally eat their own. <laughs> <laughs>